for you. So this afternoon, I want to share with you, uh, I believe, a word that is going to be appropriate for this season in time. As most of us are obviously in, in our current situation, and as things begin to evolve, things begin to change, uh, there will be things that we have to also make changes in our lives. For the month of May, the theme that, that, that is going to be uh, uh, sharing on is uh, recalibrating our priorities. As we are all aware, with the changes that's going to happen, you know, we've been, in a sense, uh, in a sort of lockdown mode uh, for the last few weeks. And a lot of things have obviously happened to families, to businesses, to your jobs, to your career. You know, some things are on hold. Some businesses are in hibernation. So there's a lot of things that has happened over the last few weeks. And as we look at what is coming up, what are the things that are going to be uh, uh, restrictions that are going to be eased and, and jobs that, that are going to be reopening um, and schools, hopefully, they will be reopening and different things. There's a lot of things to consider. There's a lot of things to, to try and put in place. And it's important for us to be aware what we need to do, okay, as an individual, as a family, and as a church, how are we going to um, put in place things that we need to be aware of? How are we going to set things in motion uh, in the weeks to come? Let me read from you, uh, 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 to you, sorry, a scripture in Matthew 6, verse 25 to 34. It says, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink all about your body. What you will wear is not life more than food and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. But yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any... One of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life. What an incredible scripture. Just to highlight the fact that, you know, we, we don't have to worry about the current situation as much as a lot of people are very concerned. But let's listen to the scripture. What does the Word of God encourage us to do in, in the coming days? Verse 28, it says, And... Why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. Verse 30. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire. Will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Verse 31. So what? Do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? Verse 32. For the pagans run after all these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But, verse 33, it says, seek first his kingdom, and his righteousness, okay? And all these things will be given to you as well. So with all, the, all these things, all these things are the things that we, we talked about, the Scripture talk about, the food, the, the, what you're going to wear, you know, things like this, do not be concerned about them. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough troubles on its own or of its own. So the scripture encourages us 
you know, as we think about what is coming, as we prepare our hearts, what is going to uh, evolve in the next few weeks, you know, I want to encourage you to focus and to prioritize what you are going to do. And the Scripture encourages, most importantly, not to worry about those things, but seek first the kingdom of God. Put God first. You know, how are you going to handle conflict and tough moments really will define who you are. So how you handle conflict and tough moments defines who you are. And we, we all understand that pressure that everybody faces, everybody faces pressure in one sense or another. And pressure is built in what? The silence. You know, a lot of people said, oh, I, 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 maybe I pray for me, I want to have, have children, or, or I want this or I want that. But you know that when you have kids, those of us that are married with children, we understand what it is. There's a lot of pressure having kids, you know. You got to do this, you got to do that, you got to do this, got to do that. And interestingly, yesterday, uh, I, I was uh, talking to somebody, and they said to me, and said, oh, it'd be great. Uh, we like to get a dog for our family. I said, don't forget, when you get a dog, it's like having a child, <laughs> you know. You got you to gotta feed, you got to walk, you got to do everything, and there will be added pressure in your life. But, you know, uh, whenever we go to fill up our tire, uh, if it's going a bit low, if it's going a bit flat, there's a thing on the machine as you inflate your tire. It's called PSI. You know, PSI stands for what? Pound per square inch. So there is only so much you and I can bear. And if you were to inflate a tire and if you exceed what it's uh, 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 meant to take in its capacity, it will eventually what? Explode. It's the same thing with many people. Pressure, you and I can only bear so much. But how we respond to the pressure is very critical. You say some people are what? Very reactionary in their response, okay? In, in the way they, they, they react to pressure, in the way they, they deal with pressure. Whereas some people are very responsive in terms of I don't react to a situation, but rather I will respond to it in a way that God wants me to respond. And on Wednesday night, uh, we were uh, doing our live devotion, and I was sharing with those that came online how Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was facing immense pressure. Imagine that he took three of his uh, uh, the inner sort of circle, uh, the closest disciples with him, and he said to them, I'm going to be here. Would you tarry with me for one hour? I'm now in the most uh, uh, difficult moment of my life. And here I am asking the Father, Father, if it be your will, take away this cup of suffering from me. He was under immense pressure. But the way Jesus reacted was incredible. He was saying, God, not my will, but your will be done. Lord, it is you. You've sent me here. You've asked that I would come to redeem the world. So, Lord God, I, Father, I commit this situation to you. He said, instead of trying to act on his own strength, on his own devices, on his own scheme, he didn't. What he did, he was saying, even in this uh, situation or time of immense pressure, God, I'm going to look to you. The incredible thing is this, the garden of Gethsemane, Gethsemane in Aramaic, it stands for oil pressed. It's a place where they crush the olive so that they can get the olive oil. So whenever we are under immense pressure, God is actually going to, in a sense, bring us to a place and a situation where we will be crushed. How many of us may be feeling that right now? We, we, we are under pressure. There is a lack of finance. There is not much work. Or there is, you know, a lack of communication, lack of uh, um, just 
uh, intimacy and associating with, with people we love and friends and family. So there is pressure being mounted on so many people today. And how you are going to respond or how you're going to react is so important. Okay? And, and, and as, as I explained to you, Jesus, when he was in that intense pressure moment, his response was, God, you are going to come first. Not my will, but your will be done. Now, there is power that comes out of pressure. There is wisdom that comes out of pressure. And there is strength that comes out of pressure. There is what? There is uh, power, there is wisdom, and there is strength that comes out of power, uh, of pressure, sorry. You know, when you are in the situation, can I encourage you this afternoon, you know, allow the Holy Spirit to begin to do that deep work in your heart, to begin to to, to bring you to a place. You see, the Holy Spirit, when God wants to change you, what He has to do, He has to take you and bring you to a place where you are being molded, where you are, in a sense, being crushed. But it is what? Let me share with you. It is the, the crushing of our life that produces the anointing of God in our lives. When Jesus was in the position in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he was really, he was pressured. But the anointing of God that is released through the life of Jesus is incredible. So be encouraged. As you go through or have been through, you know, the last few weeks has been a lot of uncertainty, a lot of pressure, a lot of, uh, you know, some of us may be feeling a bit discouraged. But, be encouraged that during this time, God is doing something. God is enlarging our heart. God is extending our borders. Because when the time would come, listen carefully, the time would come when these things are going to pass us. I believe with all of my heart, many of us are going to come out stronger. Many of us are going to come out wiser. Many of us are going to come out with more power, with more wisdom, with more strength to cope and to uh, adjust our life according to what God has for us. So how do we prioritize as we embark on the next phase? You know, things are not going to be normal. We all know that. You know, we, we have heard just last week that uh, apparently the uh, social distancing thing is still going to be uh, in place. Things are not going to be normal. Things are going to be different, you know, we, but we have to adapt to the life. We have to now prioritize what do we need to do. Let me encourage us. Number two, prioritizing your spiritual, physical, and mental health, okay? Prioritizing your spiritual. Notice that I put down there, the first thing is your spiritual life. Very important. When you get your spiritual life in order in relation to uh, uh, putting God and, 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 and putting God as the center of your life, everything else in your life will flow accordingly. Okay, so your spiritual life, your physical life, how to look after yourself, how to make sure that you are, you know, obviously keeping hygiene and all those standards that we've been practicing for the last, well, I don't know how many weeks now. People are encouraged, obviously, to wash their hands. You know, all those things, is, it's going to be different. And what about your mental health? You know, keeping your mind in place, in order. Most Christians are encouraged to do the following. What are they encouraged to do in terms of prioritizing? Okay, they're saying it's going to be, uh, I'm going to put God first, Jesus first, and then I'm going to put my family second, and then after that, my career and my job. Am I correct to say that? Most people or most Christians are encouraged to uh, uh, somehow, somewhere, uh, to, to prioritize their life in this regard. But I want to share something with you this afternoon. You see, there is a bit of a problem when we try to do this in this way, is that the essential problem with that 
uh, a thought is that this approach, it segregates the different priorities of life. Do you think that's what God wants us to do? That to segregate, that we put Jesus, God first, family, career, you know, different things, and, and jobs. Is that what God is encouraging us through His Word? I, I want us to think about this for a moment. When you prioritize your life, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 to 20, if you have some time, take some time to read that. Why? Because the Scripture says that Jesus is first before and over everything. But it also says that all things were created through and for Him, that all things that in Him, all things hold together. So that's an incredible thing to think about. What the Scripture is saying that it is, it is God who is actually at the center of everything. So when we try to segregate and just say uh, Jesus, God, and then family, and then career and job, I don't think that's the right way to do it. What we ought to do is, what do we do? The right approach is what? Not Jesus, then my family. But it's Jesus in my family. That's a different thing altogether. It's not just saying, God, I, I'm going to put you first, and I'm going to forget my family. Or, God, I'm going to uh, put you first, then I forget my career. Or, God, I'm going to put you first, and then I, I just leave everything, my finance and resources, everything. No. Let me just reiterate what I just said. So it is the right approach is not Jesus, then my family, but it's Jesus in my family. There's a big difference. So when I prioritize my life in the coming days and the coming weeks, as things change, as things evolve, I'm going to say, God, it is Jesus in my family. You see, in my family, we all have values that every family embrace. Time that you want to spend with your children as you see them grow up, and they grow up really quick. Okay, they grow up really quick. It was interesting. One of our, uh, one of our, uh, our church members, um, uh, I, I saw a little uh, video clip that was taken about maybe a year and a half, nearly, yeah, a year and a half ago. And, and she was being held by her grandfather, all right, and I don't, I don't, I don't mind mentioning the name. It's actually Joy. <laughs> I, I saw this video clip. Joy being held by her granddad, and we were uh, at the old premise, and she was so little. And I was just seeing her. She was waving her hands. She was enjoying the music and all that, you know. And when I look at her now, I just thought, my gosh, isn't time fly, you know? And and she's now, oh, she really enjoys one of my songs, by the way, which is good. Hosanna, Hosanna, you know. But it was interesting how time flies. Time just passes so quickly. But you see, I want to I say to every family here, I want to encourage every family. So it's not Jesus and then my family. No, it is actually Jesus in my family. So I acknowledge God. I, I put Him as the center of my family. Everything that we do, the decisions that we're going to make in our family, will we and will you consult God? Will you say, God, what are your thoughts? What do you think? Lord, should we be, should we be doing this? Or should we be moving uh, uh, to somewhere? Or should we be uh, uh, involved in, in this ministry or that ministry? God, what are your thoughts? Put Jesus in your family. And then your career. See, this is a challenging thing. Because a lot of people, they can, in a sense, put their career and their job, obviously, before anything else. Some people have sacrificed. They're saying that, oh, I, I, I don't want to get involved in a relationship or I don't want to get married because I want to build my career or I want to make sure that I'm well established before I 
get involved in any relationship. So there are people who's got different thoughts, putting their career first, putting their job first, you know. And you and I have heard of people that are saying, I, um, I'm not able to work, you know. Uh, uh, sorry, I, I, I'm not able to come to church uh, because I need to work on a certain day or a certain time and all that. So because of the pressure they face, they have then looked to uh, the situation to help meet their need. So they have decided to put that aspect of their life first, their career or their job. But it's not. When you prioritize, recalibrate, it's saying, God, I want you to be involved in my career. And many times I have prayed for many people for jobs, people that are needing to look for jobs. And, you know, in our church, we thank the Lord. There must be an anointing that we pray for so many people looking for jobs, and God has blessed them. God has opened the door of opportunity for them. But every time when I uh, am given the privilege to pray for somebody who's needing a job, and my prayer has always been, Lord, may you lead them to the place where you want them to be. Because it's in that place they will glorify you. Because, God, it is Jesus in their career. It is Jesus in their job. So it's not job for job's sake. I pray that God will take the person to what I call a divine placement. A place where God will lead them to where they can be used by God in their workplace, in their universities, in their studies, where God becomes the center of their career. God becomes the center of their work. God becomes the center of their job. And so it's not just going there so that we can earn the money and survive. God says, I will look after you. Don't worry about the clothes. Don't worry about the food and everything else. You know, because tomorrow has got enough worries of his own. But the Bible says, well, seek ye first the kingdom of God. So for those of us that are, that are you know, at the moment maybe you know, being laid off, you know, being made redundant or due to COVID-19, can I encourage you, do not worry. Seek first the kingdom of God. God will open the right door for you at the right time. Where God is going to place you, you're going to be in a position where you're going to be a testimony for God. Because once you make Jesus and you prioritize, you make Jesus the center of your career, the Jesus the center of your work, things will change. You will see the hand of God and the blessing of God upon your life. And Jesus, not Jesus than my finance and resource, but rather Jesus in my finance and resource. This is a big area because all of us, we need money to get food. We need money to pay, you know, for rent, uh, for, for mortgages. We, we need all those things, you know, but do not worry. Make Jesus the center of your finance. So that means, God, I need to give to you what is rightfully yours. See, especially when things are tight, people get tighter. <laughs> you know, it's hard to release uh, what God has blessed them with. And I want to encourage us, all of us, do not hold back, but rather release what God has given and blessed you with. Because the moment you release, God will return to you. The moment you surrender, you make Jesus the center of your finance. You render, the Bible says, okay, Jesus was saying you render to Caesar what is Caesar's. You give to God what is God's. That means you pay your taxes. You pay what you owe the government. And then you got to then give to God, you know, what God is encouraging us to give. 10% of our income as a tithe or free will offerings. You know, give to God. Don't hold back. Because the moment you hold back, the Bible says it will lead to poverty. But rather, release these finances. Trust God. Believe God. God has worked in so many situations. 
Now, I have personally heard so many testimonies of people opening up and releasing to God and, and blessing the work of God. And God, in return, blessed. Some of you have heard, you know, that as, as we begin to uh, uh, surrender to God, I, uh, I obviously, you know, some weeks ago when I, when I just said to God, God, this is what you've asked me to do, and I have to do what God has asked me to do, and in return, God released the blessing. God released the finances. So take a note of that. And let us make Jesus the center in our family. Let us make Jesus the center in our career, in our job. Let us make Jesus the center of our resources, of our finance. And lastly, when I prioritize my life in making Jesus the center, God's provision has a place to land. Can I say that again one more time? When I prioritize my life in making Jesus the center, God's provision has a place to land. In 1 Kings chapter 17, we have uh, read or have come across this incredible account of the widow who fed Elijah. This is an incredible story. You see, the widow... When Elijah the prophet came to the widow, the widow said to Elijah, I have not much left. All I have is this bit of flour and this bit of oil. I'm going to bake myself something, feed me and my son, and we are going to die. But you know what the man of God says? The man of God says, if you bake that, and when you do bake it, I want you to feed me first. Feed the man of God first. Feed the purposes of God first. And the woman obviously did what the man of God, Elijah, told her to do. And in return, what happened? You see, the provision landed in her household. The provision of God came to her. Her supply did not run out. Her supply just kept coming. And the most incredible thing, too, is what? Her son died, and there was a miracle of resurrection. The man of God brought the child back to life. Why? How? Because she understood that the priority is what? To make Jesus the center. The priority is to look after the purposes and the things of God first in our life, making Him the center, which is the most important thing. You see, our priorities are proven what by our decisions, not our intentions. People can say it, or I intend to do this, or I intend to do that. Next week, uh, this is what I intend to do. Not just your intentions, but it's actually what? Your decision to do it. So this afternoon, if you intend, you've got to decide to do it. Don't just think about it. This afternoon, you say, God, as we come now to the next phase of what is going to happen with all these changes that are taking place in our workplace, in our schools, in our career, in our jobs. There are things that are going to take shape in the next few weeks. What am I going to do? How am I going to recalibrate? How am I going to put my priorities? Where am I going to place them? Am I going to go so all out now, just going work, 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 work? It's because I haven't worked for the last one how many weeks. And, and forget about who God is. Forget about church. Forget about, you know, uh, uh, meeting people. Think about those things. Think about your finances. You know, I know many people are obviously running short, but thank the Lord for the government who has stepped in to help uh, many families and many businesses, many individuals. Thank the Lord for that. But I want to encourage you this afternoon. Think about these things. Say, so God, in my finance, as I'm blessed, Lord, help me not to forget to put God 
as the center. In my career, God, help me to put you in the center. Lord, in my family, help me to put you in the center. As I uh, look about the changes, as I uh, prioritize my life in the coming weeks, God, let me put you as the center. Not just intentions, but a decision. You make a decision right now today to include God and to put God first. And your faith is defined, why? By your total trust in God and not by the conditions you're in. So your faith this afternoon is going to be defined by what? Your total trust in God. You see, we are all in different situations. We are all in different conditions. Some of us are doing reasonably all right, but some of us are under immense pressure. You know, pressure from so many areas of life. And there's only so much that you can take. There's only so much you can take. But be encouraged because the pressure that you face today are going to build inside you inner strength. It's going to give you wisdom in the days ahead, what you need to do, okay? What you're going to, uh, how you're going to lay out your life, how you're going to plan your life. But I want to encourage you, include God in all your planning. Include God, make Him the center. Prioritize and make Him the center. Everything, the Bible says, as we read uh, in Matthew, everything will fall into place. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things. What are these things? The legitimate needs, the legitimate cares of this world, the things that we uh, uh, need, the things to live. You know, remember just to put God first. And all these things, the Bible says, will be added to you. Don't worry about tomorrow. Because tomorrow has enough worries of its own. So let me remind us again this afternoon. What is the right approach? It is Jesus in my family. It is Jesus in my career. It is Jesus in my finance. You know, the pressure that you face. God is going to use that to turn your life around. He's going to make you strong. And I was saying this uh, on Wednesday's uh, live devotional as I shared with uh, the church. I believe with all of my heart, when COVID-19 passed us, all of us will receive an incredible provision from God. As we trust Him, as we look to Him, we we. We will be tested, as we are being tested now. Uh, we have been uh, put in a place of pressure. All these things happen for a reason. That God will build inner strength in each one of us. God will elevate our faith. God will uh, cost us, not just uh, uh, our intentions, like I said, but it's our decision to do something that God has spoken us to do. All these things, different areas of our lives, we will see an increase. Financially, I believe God will open up the heavens because the world has come to a place where we got to recognize that we depend, we need God. You know, it has forced us to trust God. If you listen to the messages that I preached a few weeks ago, you know, I put down there, and one of the messages, this is, this could be, and it is, the best thing that could have happened. Why? Because it has forced us to trust God. And that's an incredible place to be, so that we are not relying on self, that we can trust Him, that we can believe in Him. God, even through the most uh, a severe uh, condition, the most severe testing, the most immense pressure, out of all these things, gold is going to come forth. You know, wisdom is going to come forth. Strength is going to come forth. Power is going to come forth. Provision is going to come forth. And I want to encourage you this afternoon, look to God, put Him as the center of your life in everything. 
Why don't you close your eyes as the musicians come this afternoon. I want us to close with this song. Jesus at the center of it all. And as soon as we uh, sing that, with your eyes closed this afternoon, I want to pray for you. I want to pray that you would be encouraged to look to God, not the conditions they're in that you are in at the moment, but to acknowledge Jesus, you be the center. Help me not to worry about tomorrow because tomorrow has enough worries of its own. But Lord God, I pray today for every family, for every individual, Lord, that is represented in our church and in the church worldwide. As we will look to Jesus, we believe, God, all things work together for good. To them that love God and to them that are called according to His purpose. Lord, You have the world in the palm of Your hand. You have, you have our lives in the palm of Your hand. And we pray today that we will be encouraged as we look ahead, Lord, to the future that we recognize that you are in control we recognize Lord that you will take hold of our lives and everything that we need Lord we know you will be able to provide you will be able to make a way where there seem no way you O oh Lord the creator of heaven and earth the earth is yours. Everything. Lord, in the book of Colossians, as we have uh, read today, as we have understood the scripture, that all things are created through you and for you. And in you, all things hold together. And we pray, Father, as the, the coming weeks, we would embrace them. Uh, we will remember to always acknowledge Jesus to be the center of it all. Come on, let's worship together this afternoon as Meth leaders. Thank you, Lord. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end it will always be it's always been you Jesus 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 at the center of it all Jesus at the center of
It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about. We thank you this afternoon. We commit our lives, we commit our family, we commit our careers, we commit our, our jobs, Lord, our finance, our resources, Lord, everything that we have to deal with, Lord, day in and day out. And today, God, even as we surrender all these to you, we thank you, Father. Your words say that we are not to worry about tomorrow because tomorrow has enough worries of its own. What we are to do, what we are to plan, what we are to put in place, first and foremost, to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And then all these things will be added to us. God, that we are to uh, prioritize and and put Jesus the center. Jesus in my family. Jesus in my career, in my job. Jesus in my finance, in my resource. Lord, we just pray for that. This will be, Lord God, a, an understanding that we will embrace, Lord, even in the weeks to come as we prepare and what is going to unfold before us. Uh, things are not going to be normal. But God, we know that as we uh, include you, Lord, to be the center of our lives and everything that we do, we believe you, Lord, will indeed make a way. Because you've said that in your word, that you will put all things in place. Because all things are created by you, through you, and for you. We thank you, God. We commit our church family. We commit, Lord, uh, uh, those who may be away in some way, Father. We just pray protection over all of our lives, protection over our children uh, and, and every individual, God, in our church family. We thank you. We commit, Lord, this week to you. May we all have a, just a, a fantastic week, a week filled with faith, a week filled with, Lord, experience and hearing your voice. 
we thank you. We, we, we pray and ask this in Jesus' name. And we all say amen. Well, praise the Lord. Have a tremendous week this coming week. And I look forward, obviously, to seeing you um, again in our Wednesday midweek devotion. So I'll be sending an email out um, in the next day or two uh, the, the, the information that you will need to log in to our Zoom meeting on Wednesday. So once again, I want to encourage you to log in and, and listen uh, to the Word of God. You know, week after week, it's going to be an encouragement for you. So take care. Have a great week ahead. And God bless you. And I want you to also say thank you to the musicians and uh, to the team uh, that has been working hard every week. We want to thank the Lord for them. They are doing a tremendous job. Okay? So if you have an opportunity, give them a call and say thank you. And then uh, when we all gather together, uh, have the opportunity and the, uh, the, the, the time that we all come back together again as a church physically, we're going to have a big celebration. A big party. Hallelujah. That's what we need to do. So God bless you. Take care and keep safe and keep warm. Amen.